Hi everybody, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lainey. Today we're going to be doing a kind of very requested video that I've been putting off because I didn't think I had the knowledge to honestly talk about it. And that is a all-inclusive video of how to make your Instagram honestly pop off. I've been using these tips and tricks the past seven days and I screenshotted my engagement because it's absolutely insane. Um, I'm really not doing anything different on the app, it's just my photo. So, tried and true and tested. What? I'm really excited for you guys to try out these kind of photo tips for Instagram and see how it goes. Before we get started, I want to say thank you so much to Epic for sponsoring this video. They are how I edit and perfect all of my Instagram photos, and we're going to talk about them a little bit later. This guide is definitely for the non-photogenic people. Um, I'm not somebody who's comfortable in front of the camera, which seems weird because YouTube, but I mean more so for posing. I'm pretty shy when it comes to photography, and I'm not really good at posing. Um, I've never had like an eye for taking photos. I've never been somebody who, you know, just takes photos all the time and has really aesthetic photos. I really had to work to make my Instagram what it is today, which seems so lame, but <laughs> it's true. I'm gonna put screenshots of what like my Instagram was in high school and you guys are just gonna die because I think if I wasn't doing YouTube, this is still how it would look. I have all the notes on my phone, so let's just get into it. Okay, starting with what I think a lot of people initially think of for taking a photo are locations. I live in suburban Michigan, so I don't get to walk the streets of New York every day and just take a picture wherever and it looks aesthetic. I definitely have to kind of think of where I'm taking a photo or how I'm gonna take it to make it look honestly photo worthy, whatever that means. So let's just go through my tips and ideas. So the first location is definitely a super basic one, but it's also really easy. And I think that's why it's basic. If you have, you know, the right um, pose and outfit in front of this one, it could be really cute. And that is just a plain background. So, you know, whether it's like a white wall or honestly just like a wall, <laughs> like a backdrop kind of look that is really easy to achieve. Um, I always get a lot of comments of people saying like, but I don't have a plain wall, a plain white wall in my house. Honestly, me either. I have to move SHIT out of the way and you know, I have everything piled in a corner, but it's out of frame and we've got the white wall where it needs to be. And then I'll just have to move everything back. Is it ideal? No, but sometimes it's what you gotta do if you're not a minimalist. <laughs> if you really don't have a plain background, what I love in the Epic app is that it can cut out your body really, really easily. That sounded weird. It has a really easy feature where you can cut out yourself from a photo and you can, you know, place yourself on a white background. So if you really don't have a location to take your photo, this one is super easy. The next location is focusing on colors in your background. So I feel like this is pretty, it seems really straightforward, but let me give you some examples because it doesn't have to necessarily be like a super cool background where you're like, oh my God, I've never seen that before. That is so photo worthy and so worthy because sometimes it's not. Sometimes just color looks really good no matter what it is. So some ideas of this that really aren't that crazy is, you know, going in a grocery store and going to the pro produce aisle, those greens will pop in any photo and make it look so cool. Or you know, the fruits, veggies, whatever. The next one is definitely inspired by Lindsay Ann on YouTube. She took a photo in front of the Home Depot like paint swatches and it's just a really cool rainbow background. You could do it in front of the neutrals or the hot like intense colors. I think that's so cool and very different. Other ideas include like a flower shop or plant shop, especially with summer coming. I know they're finally opening in Michigan and they're great locations to take some photos. I've done this one before where you actually open your fridge and take a photo in front of it. Just like the colors of everything behind you looks really good. This is one of like my most well-performing photos too on Instagram. I think on Instagram we've really gotten away from like when the travel vloggers were super in and huge and you had to take a photo you know in front of the ocean or like the pyramids to get a lot of likes on it now people just want to see like real and doable photos so if you're taking a photo in front of your fridge people are gonna like that and probably save it and be like oh yeah i could do that too so very good high engagement photo <laughs> which seems weird even like the drink fridges at the like 7-eleven or convenience store they have really nice lighting behind them and it can look really really cool if taken 
the right way. Any street normally looks pretty cool. Just don't stand in front of, you know, one building that's your favorite. Just try and get all the buildings behind it because at least for me, there's not a lot of like cool areas where I live. So I don't want anybody to focus on just one thing, just all of it together. It's like, oh, that's a background. She was out just walking, taking a photo. It's a really cool and um, easy look for an Instagram photo. If you find like a cool car on the street, take a photo in front of that. Or if you have a cool car. <laughs> And then another super, super easy one that you can do basically any time is just getting the sky in your photo. So you would have someone take the photo from below you and you'll only have the background be the sky. When you're taking photos of any location, play with or have a person who's taking your photo, have your tripod, play with every angle and height and like, you know, just really tilt it up, whatever. Whenever I have my boyfriend take photos of me, I make sure to take one of him to like show him where I want the camera and how I'm gonna be standing and to get from like my knees up or my feet up or whatever. It really, really helps so they can have like a guide to how to take the photo. The next tip that I have is don't just stand against every background, like don't have your body completely against every background. This feels very like 2010 Instagram to me. Um, you know, standing in front of a brick wall, standing in front of like a mural. They're cute photos, but just to switch it up, take a few steps away from whatever you're taking a photo in front of and I promise you it'll look so much more natural and less posed. Even like I said, doing angles to things instead of if I was taking a photo in front of this, getting it dead on, I would have somebody stand at a corner and angle and take it like that. It can make it feel a little bit more candid and just not so posed. Um, it's definitely something that I use in almost all my Instagrams. I'll really only go dead on to something. I think I, I did take a photo in front of this and I did it dead on because to my left and right are complete disasters. So it's about like keeping what I want in frame. The next location I have for you guys are extreme close-ups. I didn't really know if to put this in posing or locations, but we're gonna say locations. This is really, really good if you hate every background and you just like your outfit. You can do it from, you know, above down where only getting like the floor in it. Um, if you're standing to get your outfit, or even just have it so zoomed in that you can't see any of your background, whether it's like a close up on like your rings and necklaces or your shoes or your sunglasses, whatever. Extreme close ups can be a really good way of getting just like a different photo in your feed without having to like go somewhere and find a good location. Honestly, they were my absolute jam for a while because I wasn't liking my face in any of my photos. I have a lot of tips now that I follow of how to get my face to look a little more photogenic in photos, but I was hating my face in all my photos just because like I didn't know what to do with it that I was constantly cropping myself from like shoulders down and people tend to want to see your face in photos they just perform a lot better for me so I think that's really helping me with my Instagram and kind of the same idea of this if you like don't have a good background is laying down on like a carpet or hardwood or cement whatever and having someone take the photo from above down um, it's a cute idea if you hate again all your locations it kind of just serves as that blank wall but your pose is a little different um, and I don't know why but when I lay down it kind of like gravity pulls all my skin back and it makes me look like I have a facelift and honestly some of my favorite photos are of me laying down. One more location idea, which really isn't a location, but I didn't know what to put it in again, are taking candid photos of your friends. Whenever you're out and about, just snap photos of your friends. Your Instagram does not have to always feature you. Most of my photos I like the best are of me not in it that I just took of my friends, you know, looking cute, having fun, good memories. People love candids on Instagram. And I know I'm talking about performance a lot, but um, if that's something you're like interested in or like want to improve on your Instagram, candids tend to improve really, really well. People don't like or at least on my Instagram people don't like the super super posy photos anymore I think they like to see you living your life and just how it looks and that's not to say the photos aren't posy in real time but on my Instagram they look more like candidates so definitely just take a bunch of photos of your friends they will appreciate it too and maybe they'll start doing it for you too and you're just gonna have so many fun candidates whether that's like taking around a film camera when you're out at night to remember because
because if I'm holding my film camera, I'll remember to take like fun photos of my friends rather than my phone. I don't really think to like pull it out and take photos. If you're someone who takes like Snapchat videos all the time, just try to switch over and take photos all the time. I don't do either though, so I need to step it up. I want to talk about about making your Instagram pop off is the editing once you have the photo. My favorite thing is to have a good photo before going into editing. I don't want to try and mess around with bad lighting or a bad pose or anything like that. That's why all those parts before are so, so, so important. Equally as important is the editing afterwards. And I'm not talking about like changing your face or anything like that. I'm just gonna show you the really minute details I do to all my photos that make the biggest difference. So the first thing I'll do normally is take a photo and crop it. I tend to like photos that are square on Instagram. I don't know why. Somebody told me once that they perform worse, but I've never noticed that. So I'll normally crop it into a square, especially if I'm doing that like extreme close up on photos that I thought I was gonna like and now I don't. You can use the crop tool to zoom in on any of the details in your photo that you wanna highlight, which I really, really like. Then moving on from crop, the next thing I like to do is use the remove tool on Epic. This one is so good. If you have a background that's not plain, maybe you have like a picture that you can't take down, a picture frame. There's a thermostat or, you know, just a big dirt mark. The remove tool is so good. You can basically cut out anything that you don't want in the photo. I use this one the absolute most. If I really like a location but there's just one big eyesore, I can take it out so easily with the remove tool. Then, you know, I'll go in, change the brightness, the highlight, the shadows, and the curves. These are all super minute things that I don't have to do all the time necessarily. You know, playing around with it definitely makes a really big difference, so I do like to do that. Um, again, like I said, I'm not a photographer, so I don't know how to get a raw image to be perfect the first time around. Adding all those little things can and make it feel not professional but just pretty so if you guys want to check out epic which i really really highly suggest doing it's a free app it's super easy to use super user friendly and it definitely can make the biggest difference on your instagram photos you guys can use the link in the description to download the app i've been using it for a while now and i really really like it okay and now we're getting on to the posing tips which have helped me so freaking much. These might seem really straightforward. So the first posing tip, if you're standing or sitting, stand up straight. Think about posture. It is so important in a photo. You will not look as frumpy or as uncomfortable if you just stand up straight. Um, when you're standing up straight too, think about having your shoulders down and your chest open. It is just such a more inviting and, I don't know, like welcoming, inviting are the same thing pose. The next posing tip I have for you guys is keeping your limbs separated from your body. So a lot of the time for me that's kind of like messing with my hands while I'm taking a photo um, Because it keeps my shoulders out and away from my torso It makes you not look like one big like chunk chunk of meat It gives you just some more dimension and it's a lot more flattering to look at Especially if you have long sleeves on or something Just try to keep your arms away from your torso You know messing with your hair is always a good one um, Keeping your hands busy it really works for me Putting your hands in your belt loops or your pockets Pockets, easy peasy and then for your legs I like to do my one foot crossed over to the front you know kind of doing um, steps back and forth works for me just to keep my legs apart or even standing with my legs straight on but not together having my feet like shoulder distance apart basically if I stand like this I kind of turn my toes in pigeon toed for some reason that is a lot more flattering to me you're messing with any of these poses I know it's so cringy try doing it in front of a mirror or start with taking mirror selfies because you can see really what poses work and what don't the next tip is for your head which is really important I'm always somebody when I used to pose I would like lift my chin up because I'm thinking oh I'm like standing up straight um, my posture is good. I'm gonna lift my chin up and it's gonna look, I don't know, like I'm confident. This was always my biggest mistake. For some reason, lifting my chin up, it makes me lose my jawline and you're seeing right at my nose. 
and it's not as flattering as I thought it was. So actually what you're gonna do is tilt your chin down just the slightest bit. It is so much more flattering just to have your head tilted the slightest bit down. And then the next thing you're gonna do is focus on keeping your chin out and down. This will really give that intense jawline and you know, not give you a fake double chin or a double chin in a photo. It's just a lot more flattering. That one has saved me so many times now. I don't crop my head out nearly as much anymore. And that tip works from taking it from the side, directly on, or whatever. And the main reason I give that tip is because most of the time when I take photos, I'm taking them from eye level or below because I want to look taller. Um, if I'm taking a full body shot, I'll tend to take it below because it makes my legs look longer, makes me look seven feet tall, and it's just more flattering. If I'm taking it from, you know, like hips up or not my full body, I'll do eye level just because it feels a little bit more natural to me. So especially though having the camera below, you want to have your head doing that tilt down a little bit because if you lift your chin up, it's not flattering nostrils. Another tip I have for posing if you're really uncomfortable is to use a prop especially something that makes you move around whether that's like holding a coffee cup and you know you can take sips of it and put both hands on it easy peasy even having something like pretending to like type on your phone or like make a phone call just keeping yourself busy and thinking like oh like how would I do this action like normally and it tends to make pretty cute photos even like walking back and forth can be a really nice shot because you're not thinking you're just walking and they tend to be pretty good photos my absolute favorite is <laughs> walking up or down stairs again i'm not good at taking photos so if i am walking up or down stairs you know like looking either looking either way or like up front or whatever i tend to get really cute photos that way or even from behind. Muy bueno. I love it. But that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed these tips and tricks. Um, I've been using them for a while and I swear it's changed my Instagram. So I hope that it does the same for you guys. I love you guys the absolute most. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to. And I will see you in a few days. Bye.